I noticed that my wife had been reading a book recently, and she said the Lord Jesus had returned. She'd always been negative in her faith in the Lord, but now she zealously preached the gospel. She'd become a different person. Was it the words in the book that changed her? When my wife wasn't at home, I took out her book and read it. <sighs> These words had authority and power, as if they were God's voice. The more I read, the brighter my heart became. Thank Almighty God for His mercy, so that I could finally hear God's voice and welcome the Lord. It was in March of 2012. I don't know the exact date, but I noticed every day after dinner, my wife finished her chores and then went to read a book. It happened one time and then it repeated. I was very curious. What was she reading? Why was she so into it? One night, I wanted to know what was going on, so I opened the door. When she saw me come in, she was putting the book away. I grabbed her hand holding the book and asked, What are you reading? She smiled and said, This is the scroll opened by the Lamb. These are the expressions by the returned Lord Jesus. We have yearned for his return, and now he's back. Hearing that, I was very shocked and afraid. I remembered the pastor said, We're believers, so we are saved. When the Lord comes, we'll be lifted into the kingdom of heaven. Any preaching of his coming is false. I said, very angry. You're making a mistake. Did you forget what the pastor told us? We are saved by believing in the Lord. If the Lord had returned, we would already be in the kingdom of heaven, but we're still here, right? As believers, we read the Bible and follow the Lord's way. Only thus will we be lifted into the kingdom of heaven when he comes. My wife said, Don't be so fast to define it. Read this book first. Then you'll know whether the Lord has really returned. Hmm. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. When it comes to the Lord's return, we need to seek and investigate. Right. But I was very against it at the time. So I couldn't take in what my wife said. So she took the book away. One time, I came home to pick up something in the middle of work, and I saw my wife reading the book again. So I frowned and ignored her. I took what I needed and left. And then I kept thinking, why is my wife so enthused about this book? She reads in her free time, and preaches the gospel. I suddenly remembered what my mother had said. Eastern lightning is powerful. Those who have knowledge of the Bible and pursue hard get lost in their books and never come out. I thought, is my wife reading an Eastern lightning book? Has she been misled by it? What if she gets deceived? and then loses the Lord's salvation. I'm immature in life. I am not familiar with the Bible. I don't know how to bring her back. And then I visited Pastor Chen to help him redecorate. I thought he was a believer for many years and was well-versed in the Bible. He had intelligent ways to bring my wife back from the brink. And so I said to Pastor Chen, Recently, my wife has been reading a book. She says that the Lord has already returned. She changed. She's different. In the past, her belief in the Lord was very weak. She didn't read the Bible much. I don't know why she pursues so strongly now. Oh, what did Pastor Chen say? After hearing this, he said solemnly, She is in danger. In the entire religious world, 
Only Eastern Lightning claims the Lord's returned. They're the only ones who don't read the Bible. Your wife may have accepted Eastern Lightning. If she believes in Eastern Lightning, she will lose the Lord's salvation and there will be no place for her in heaven. You have to act quickly to bring her back. That made me terrified. I worried my wife's wrong belief would possibly make the Lord abandon her. I asked Pastor Chen what I should do. He thought for a while and said, I am a pastor, and I know the Bible better than you. Tonight, I want you to steal the book that your wife is reading, and I'll help you take a look at it. But you can't let her find out. Steal the book? Yes. At that time, I thought it'd be better for the pastor to analyze it. I'd know what was written in it. I'd gain some discernment. If my wife's belief was wrong, we could persuade her to turn back in time. That night, I secretly brought the scroll opened by the Lamb to Pastor Chen's house. He took the book from me and flipped through it casually, then slammed it down on the table. Staring at the cover of the book, he said disdainfully, Yes, this is an Eastern Lightning book. I'm sure that your wife believes in Eastern Lightning. Their preaching is very lofty, and most people can't refute it. Those who pursue strongly and are familiar with the Bible stop reading it after they read their books. Are they believers if they are not reading the Bible? Your wife has been deceived by Eastern Lightning. If she's not back, she'll lose the blessings of the Kingdom of Heaven. The pastor made his judgment without reading the content of the book? Yeah. I was a little confused with all of that. Those unfamiliar with the Bible lack discernment. It's normal for them to be deceived. But if those who were leaders for years and know the Bible well believe in Eastern Lightning, is there some sort of mystery in this book? Otherwise, why are the ones familiar with the Bible becoming so attracted and believing in Eastern Lightning? I don't understand it at all. So, I said to the pastor, You're very familiar with the Bible. Look at the book's content and tell me about it. What does it say? What should I do to persuade my wife to come back? I was very surprised when Pastor Chen said, I am a pastor and mature in life. I don't need this book. We are saved by believing in the Lord. We'll wait for Him to take us into God's kingdom. If your wife preaches Eastern Lightning to you, don't believe it. Eastern Lightning is nothing but a financial scam. In this situation, all you can do is to make sure you don't give her much money. Deposit all your money, don't let her access it, and keep an eye on her at all times. Huh. That sounds ridiculous. What did you think of it at the time? At the time, I felt the pastor knew more than me and it was to protect me. So I decided to do exactly as he said. When I got home, I thought my wife hadn't come back. So I carefully put the book back in its place. But before I could do that, my wife all of a sudden came out of the other room. I was surprised. And then she anxiously asked me, did you take my book by any chance? I was afraid she would find out I stole it, so I lied and said, I didn't take it. You always leave your things lying around. I'll help you find it. Then I rummaged around the room, and finally I got the book, gave it to her, and said, Here it is. You always leave things lying around. You've got to be careful with your things. My wife just kept staring at me, and I felt my face turning red. I felt very guilty. Fortunately for me, my wife didn't ask any more. She took the book and left. At that moment, I remembered that the Lord Jesus asked us to be honest. Let your communication be yes, yes, no, no. 
What did I do? I went against his teachings and against my conscience. I had acted like a thief. But I consoled myself. I told myself I did it to protect her. The next day, I went to the bank, changed all the pins for all of our bank books and cards, and decided to deposit all of our extra money. We'd only have enough for food. To my surprise, my wife didn't say anything after she found out about it. Besides the reading, she did every single chore, like she always did. And also, she treated me pleasantly, like she always did. But I felt ashamed, uneasy. I was a long-time believer, but I treated my wife in such a despicable way. This wasn't how a Christian should behave. My wife had changed a lot since she began reading the book, no doubt about it. I treated her this way, and she wasn't angry. Was it the words in the book that changed her? Was I making a mistake? Could it be that Eastern Lightning was the return of Lord Jesus? This time I had to figure it out. Uh, you had a desire to seek. Yeah. One night while we were eating dinner, my wife wanted me to read the book again. And she said, You say we are saved by faith in the Lord and that he will take us into the kingdom of heaven. But look at our mother and sister-in-law. Look at us. We believe in the Lord, yet we always sin during the day and confess at night. We can't escape the bondage of sin. The scriptures say, without holiness, we can't see the Lord. God is holy. If we still sin so frequently, how will we enter the kingdom of heaven? Now, the Lord Jesus has returned. He speaks the truth, and he does the work of judgment beginning with God's house to completely cleanse people of all sins and bring us into his kingdom. To enter the kingdom of heaven, we must accept Almighty God's judgment work in the last days. What my wife said made some sense to me. We still lived in a state of sinning by day and then confessing by night, but we couldn't escape the bondage of sin. The Lord is holy. So it's very hard to say whether people like us could enter the kingdom of heaven. I nodded when I realized this. My wife saw that I wasn't very resistant, and she said, the two sisters could talk to me about the Lord's return the next day. So I agreed. But I knew that I wasn't familiar with the Bible. So I wanted Pastor Chen to come and help me. That way he could debate with the sisters. Then I'd gain discernment and see whose words fit with the Bible most. So later on, I told Pastor Chen about this thing. You still trusted and worshiped the pastor? Yeah. The next day, after dinner, everyone had arrived. One of the sisters fellowshiped, The Lord has returned. He expresses the truth and does the work of judging and purifying people. And before she could finish, Pastor Chen was shouting, On what basis do you say, The Lord has returned? Our sins are forgiven by our belief in the Lord Jesus. We are eternally saved by grace. We don't need this work of judgment. You just don't understand the Bible. The other sister said to the pastor, Brother, we can't gain the truth by quarreling about it. The Lord really has returned. And if you read the truth he expresses, you will know whether he is real. Pastor Chen said impatiently, Why read it? The Lord hasn't returned. You don't understand the Bible at all. So why are you preaching the gospel? I know much more about the Bible than you, and I won't listen to this. He didn't really want to seek in the matter of God's appearance and work. How could he welcome the Lord this way? Right. The two sisters used the Bible to talk about God's work in the last days, but Pastor Chen didn't listen to a single word. And he constantly interrupted them, not allowing them to speak until the two sisters had to leave. 
And then he said to my wife, do not listen to them. You don't understand the Bible, so do not be deceived, but read the Bible often. And then, in less than 15 minutes, they had all left. <sighs> what a shame. As the pastor of a church, if someone testifies the Lord's return, he should seek and investigate and debate with the people from the Church of Almighty God. If it really is the Lord's return, we should accept it together. And if it isn't, then we will gain some discernment, and that'll be good for everyone. Why was Pastor Chen so arrogant? If he knew the Bible, he should have had a proper discussion with them. I thought I would gain something that evening, but in fact, I was disappointed. And I was very unhappy with the pastor. But his fellowship was based on the Bible. And the two sisters didn't fellowship on anything outside the Bible. Both of them had a biblical basis. So why were their understandings so different? I was very confused. Later, my wife and I went back to our hometown. Pastor Liu and co-worker Liang from the local church came by our place to tell my wife not to believe Eastern Lightning. She didn't listen. The co-worker angrily pointed at my wife and berated her. I just couldn't believe that. He said many things condemning Eastern Lightning to frighten her. I thought, is this a believer in the Lord? My wife only believes in Eastern Lightning. You should be helping and supporting her out of love as the Lord teaches. Don't wag your finger in her face like you're doing. I was very angry. I wanted to reason with him. But just then, Pastor Liu pulled me out the door. He said, You have to persuade your wife. You know she hasn't believed in Eastern Lightning for a while. She must confess her sins and then repent. And if she won't listen then you can call the police if you have to. Handing believers in God over to the police is what Judas would do. Yeah. I thought it was wrong for Pastor Liu to say that. But I also thought there was no other way to stop her. After they had left, my wife said to me, You know, I was often passive before and my faith was cold but no pastors or even elders came to support me. Now I've welcomed the Lord, and you can see how diligent they are. I can tell you, they don't seem to care about my life at all. They want to drag me back into religion just so I can give them offerings. And when they can't, they will change. They wagged their finger in my face and said blasphemous things. Is this following the Lord's teachings? Are they behaving like believers in the Lord? You must have discernment of them and not blindly listen to what they say. The believers of Judaism blindly follow the Pharisees in condemning the Lord Jesus. And in the end, they crucified the Lord. They offended God's disposition. After hearing my wife, I recalled how Pastor Liu said he came to bring my wife back. But... They didn't offer a word of love or support. Everything they said was intimidation, threats, and condemnation. They wanted the police to arrest my wife. How would the believers in the Lord say these things? Wouldn't this be pushing my wife into the pit? I was furious. And after that, I never trusted the pastors again. Hmm, I see. While determining the true way, we can't blindly listen to people. Since you didn't get an answer from the pastors, did you ever think about reading Almighty God's words yourself to see whether it was God's voice? Yes, at some point. After this incident, my wife still wanted me to read Almighty God's words. I was very curious. I only wanted to see what was inside of that book. It made my wife's faith very firm and made her try to persuade me to read it. But... I didn't want my wife to know my attitude. 
so I was embarrassed to tell her. One day, when my wife was out, I took her book and I read it. I opened the first chapter, and then I read the title preface. Here's what I read. Though many people believe in God, few understand what faith in God means and what they must do to conform to God's will. This is because, though people are familiar with the word God and phrases such as the work of God, they do not know God, and still less do they know His work. No wonder, then, that all those who do not know God are muddled in their belief of Him. People do not take belief in God seriously, and this is entirely because believing in God is too unfamiliar, too strange for them. In this way, they fall short of God's demands. In other words, if people do not know God and do not know His work, then they are not fit for God's use, and still less are they able to satisfy His will. Belief in God means believing that there is a God. This is the simplest concept as regards believing in God. What's more, believing that there is a God is not the same as truly believing in God. Rather, it is a kind of simple faith with strong religious overtones. True faith in God means the following. On the basis of the belief that God holds sovereignty over all things, one experiences His words and His work, purges one's corrupt disposition, satisfies the will of God, and comes to know God. Only a journey of this kind may be called faith in God. Amen. When I reached this point, I felt like no human could say such words. In our belief, beyond believing that all things are created by God, we must experience God's words and work, cast off our corruptions, and come to know God. These words made it very clear what belief in God is. As a believer for many years, I just knew I had to read the Bible, listen to sermons, and pray. Whatever the pastor said, I listened to them. I believed every single time. This was not believing in God. This was believing in the pastors. The more I read these words, the brighter my heart became and the more I wanted to read. Whenever my wife wasn't at home, I secretly took the book out to read it. One day, I read some of Almighty God's words. There are those who read the Bible in grand churches and recite it all day long, yet not one among them understands the purpose of God's work. Not one among them is able to know God. Still less can anyone among them accord with God's will. They are all worthless, vile people, each standing on high to lecture God. They willfully oppose God, even as they carry His banner, claiming faith in God. Still, they eat the flesh and drink the blood of man. All such people are devils that devour the soul of man, head demons that deliberately get in the way of those trying to step onto the right path, and stumbling blocks impeding those who seek God. They may appear of sound constitution, but how are their followers to know that they are none other than antichrists who lead people to stand against God? How are their followers to know that they are living devils dedicated to the devouring of human souls? After reading these words, I immediately thought of the pastors and elders. They were familiar with the Bible. Outwardly, they are humble and loving. Many times they have told us to wait for the coming of the Lord. But once someone actually testified his return, they had no desire to seek and to investigate. The pastor asked me to steal the book, saying he wanted to help me check it. One would think that he should have read the contents of the book, right? But he didn't read it, and he condemned my wife for being wrong. The co-worker scolded my wife. He condemned her, intimidating and threatening her. Pastor Liu, 
told me to call the police. He wanted me to betray my wife and hand her over. How could believers in God do such things? If Almighty God was the Lord Jesus' second coming, but the pastors, instead of leading us to seek and investigate, tried their very best to get in our way and wanted me to call the police to arrest my wife. Weren't they just like these words describe stumbling blocks that prevented us from seeking the true way? Weren't they people who resisted God, claiming to believe in Him? I thought of how when the Lord Jesus came to work, the Pharisees didn't seek or investigate either. They did their best to condemn him. Then the Lord was nailed to the cross. If Almighty God was the return of Lord Jesus, the pastors were doing exactly what the Pharisees did in their time. I thought the pastors and elders might be people who resisted the Lord. Oh, you gained a little discernment of the pastors? Yeah. At that moment, I thought, I can't listen to the pastors anymore. I need to investigate Almighty God's work to see if He is the Lord's return. Thank God. His word is the truth. After reading it, people can understand the truth and see things clearly. Yeah. Later, my wife invited Brother Joe from the Church of Almighty God to fellowship with me. I asked him, The Bible says, For with the heart man believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. We have been saved by believing in the Lord. Why do we need God to do a stage of the work of judgment? Brother Cho fellowshiped. What does it mean to be saved? By believing in the Lord Jesus? Actually, salvation refers to that people believe in the Lord, pray and confess their sins. Their sins are forgiven. They're not punished by the law and they enjoy the peace, joy, and abundant grace bestowed by the Lord. This is what it means to be saved in the age of grace. But our sinful nature still exists within us. We haven't cast off our sin. God is holy. The kingdom of God is a holy place. God can't bring those who still sin and resist Him into His kingdom. So, in the last days, God performs a stage of judgment work to purify people. This way, people can enter the kingdom of God. Brother Cho also said that God's work in the last days had long been prophesied in the Bible, just as the Lord Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. And 1 Peter 4.17 says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. He said, now we see the Lord will express the truth when he returns as well as do the work of judging and purifying people. And judgment will begin with the house of God. Almighty God's work fulfills all these prophecies. Then, Brother Joe showed me a recitation video of God's word. Almighty God says, a sinner such as you who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus and that you are not counted as a sinner because of the salvation of God. But this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean. 
yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but you have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man which is the key step of changing and perfecting. You, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are therefore incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Man was only saved and forgiven his sins for his faith. But the sinful nature of man was not extirpated and still remained within him. The sins of man were forgiven through the agency of the incarnate God. But this did not mean that man no longer had sin within him. The sins of man could be forgiven through the sin offering. But as for just how man can be made to sin no more, and how his sinful nature may be extirpated completely and transformed, he has no way of solving this problem. The sins of man were forgiven, and this is because of the work of God's crucifixion. But man continued to live within his corrupt satanic disposition of old. This being so, Man must be completely saved from his corrupt satanic disposition so that his sinful nature may be completely extirpated, never to develop again, thus enabling the disposition of man to be transformed. This would require man to grasp the path of growth in life, to grasp the way of life, and to grasp the way to change his disposition. Furthermore, it would require man to act in accordance with this path, so that his disposition may gradually be changed, and he may live under the shining of the light, so that all that he does may be in accord with the will of God, so that he may cast away his corrupt satanic disposition, and so that he may break free from Satan's influence of darkness, thereby emerging fully from sin. Only then will man receive complete salvation. Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering. He did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to become the sin offering and bear the sins of man, but it also required God to do even greater work to rid man completely of his satanically corrupted disposition. And so, now that man has been forgiven of his sins, God has returned to the flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. This work has brought man into a higher realm, all those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light, and they shall gain the truth, the way, and the life.
Brother Cho fellowshiped, Almighty God's words are very clear. The Lord Jesus only did the work of redemption. He did not completely save humankind from sin. Although we believe in the Lord and our sins are forgiven, our sinful nature still exists in us, and we cannot escape the bondage of sin. In our years believing in the Lord, we have often lied and deceived. We've been arrogant and envious, self-important, ready to fight. Our forsaking and expending for the Lord is all transacting with God in exchange for His blessings. When we face trials and tribulations, we resist and judge or even betray the Lord and so on. For those like us who often live in sin, who tend to resist and judge God, how can we be qualified to enter the kingdom of God? In the last days, based on God's management plan to save humankind, the needs of corrupt humankind, and also the Lord Jesus' work of redemption, Almighty God expresses truth and does His work of judgment to cleanse and change people, to save people from sin and bring them into the kingdom of heaven. If we only accept the Lord Jesus' work of redemption, then it will be impossible for our satanic dispositions to change. And so we will live forever in sin, bonded to it, and we're not qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's why we must accept Almighty God's work of judgment and chastisement, come to understand the path to dispositional change, cast off our corrupt dispositions, and become people who obey and fear God, only then can we truly be saved by God. Mm. Once you understood the meaning of God's work of judgment, your notions were resolved. Yeah. After hearing his fellowship, my heart brightened. Being redeemed is only the forgiveness of sin. It doesn't mean we can enter the kingdom of heaven. I'd believed for over 10 years. I prayed for God's forgiveness, confessed my sins, but my corrupt dispositions hadn't changed at all. Also, Pastor Chen, Pastor Leo, and the others, after believing for many years, faced with the news of the Lord's return, didn't seek or investigate. They hindered others from seeking the true way. They even resisted and condemned it. They encouraged me to call the police to arrest my wife. How could those who sin and resist God enter the kingdom of heaven? With that in mind, I said to Brother Cho, we still haven't cast off our sins, so we really need to accept Almighty God's work of judgment. Then I decided to ask him how Almighty God does the work of judgment. And he read me another passage of Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, Christ of the last days uses a variety of truths to teach man, to expose the substance of man, and to dissect the words and deeds of man. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and the disposition of God, and so on. These words are all directed at the substance of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, the words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. In undertaking his work of judgment, God does not simply make clear the nature of man with a few words. He exposes, deals with, and prunes over the long term. All these different methods of exposure, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth of which man is utterly bereft. Only methods such as these can be called judgment. Only through judgment of this kind can man be subdued and thoroughly convinced about God, and moreover, 
gain true knowledge of God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, of the purpose of God's work, and of the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt essence and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment, for the essence of this work is actually the work of opening up the truth, the way, and the life of God to all those who have faith in Him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. Brother Joe fellowshiped. Almighty God puts things very clearly. God's work of judgment is actually God opening up His truth, His way, and life to people. In the last days, Almighty God expresses all aspects of truth, and with God's righteous and majestic dispositions, He judges and exposes people's satanic natures. He analyzes people's words and deeds, and one by one, He reveals our various notions and our improper motives in believing in God. Also, our arrogant, deceitful, and stubborn satanic dispositions, and even the thoughts and the ideas hidden deep in our hearts, He reveals everything. When we read Almighty God's words, it's as if God is judging and revealing us face to face. We come to realize our satanic nature, see the fact of our corruption by Satan, gain knowledge of God's righteous disposition that brooks no offense, also have fear of God in our hearts. We hate ourselves and repent from the bottom of our hearts, have true repentance, and gradually change our corrupt dispositions. God's work is so practical. <sighs> yeah. In the past, I imagined God's work as something supernatural and vague. I thought that once I believed in the Lord, I could enter the kingdom of heaven. This is fully inconsistent with the facts of God's work. When I realized this, I was certain that Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus. I was happy to accept Almighty God's work in the last days. Thank God. Thank God. I'm very glad I didn't go back to the pastors. Looking back, I see how I clung to my own imaginings. I refused to welcome the Lord and hear His voice, and I hindered my wife. I was so ignorant and blind, and I feel deep regret. But I thank Almighty God for having mercy on me and bringing me before Him step by step so that I could finally hear God's voice and welcome the Lord. Thank God. Thank God.